Hi, this is Gary with MacMost episode number 2000. That's right, 2000 episodes. So let's take a look at some of the best advice I've given out over the last 12 years. So for the first decade of MacMost it was ad supported. That means there were all those ads at the MacMost.com website. I hated them, you hated them, so I got rid of them and instead now it's a Patreon supported site. You can go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can find out more, join us, and also get exclusive content. Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now. This is going to be a semi-daily program where we talk about all sorts of things having to do with Macintosh, iPod, and iPhone. Now I stopped numbering MacMost videos a while ago. You don't see the numbers in the titles anymore or anything like that. But I do kind of keep track of it still so I know this is episode number 2000. That's a lot of episodes. I've started in 2007, changed formats a few times, sometimes been three episodes a week, most of the time been five episodes a week. I've given out lots of advice and some of those episodes are pretty old and obsolete. They deal with old operating systems, old iPhones, things like that. But some of those old episodes really hold up. So let's take a look at five old episodes where I've given out advice and that advice still holds up today. So first, all the way back in episode number 240, I posed the question, do you shut down your Mac or put it to sleep? Let's take a look at one of the biggest dilemmas to face Mac users, to shut down or to sleep. And of course the answer is you put it to sleep. A lot of people still think that you need to shut down your Mac at the end of every day or even if you're not going to use it for a few hours or something like that. In fact, you should let your Mac sleep because there's a lot of maintenance it does in the background. It does that while it's sleeping rather than using up the processor while you're trying to use it. One of the reasons people experience slow Macs is because they shut down their Mac the minute they're finished using it, start it up, and start using it again. This means it can't perform those maintenance tasks like spotlight indexing and backing up while it's just sleeping and being idle. It has to do them while you're working. So it slows things down. Now on episode 357 I asked the question, do you need antivirus software? On today's episode I'm going to address a controversial topic. Do you need antivirus software for your Mac? And my answer is no. You just need to follow three rules. And this is where I came up with the three rules and I've been talking about those ever since. I've come out with a free book, a free course, everything. They're all based on these three rules. And the three rules are only download software from sites that you trust. So starting with the Mac App Store and then maybe a couple of companies like Microsoft and Adobe directly from their sites. Rule number two is to keep your Mac updated. A lot of people say, I don't want to update to the latest operating system or I don't want this update. I'm busy today and I wanted to do that. But those updates include security improvements. So you want to make sure that you stay up to date not just with the operating system but with the software as well because older versions of software could have security flaws in it too. And the third thing is just to keep up to date with the news because you know the press is going to be all over it if there's a major security issue with Apple. And if anything major happens that you need to know about to protect yourself, it'll be there and you can take whatever steps are needed. Now right around episode 577 I did a couple of videos where I talked about not stressing about things. I noticed people were stressing a lot about their Macs. So I did a series of videos while I was on vacation with beautiful Hawaiian backdrops and one of them was don't stress about rumors. The question I get all the time is, is it the right time to buy a new Mac or an iPhone, iPod, or iPad? People hear rumors and they think a new one might be coming out soon and should they wait or should they buy now? I saw lots of people stressing about like, oh I need to get a new Mac but there's a rumor that they're going to change the Macs in some way and do I wait? So basically I said, look, there are always going to be rumors of updates and there are always going to be updates. Get a Mac when you need it. There's always going to be a next Mac that's going to make yours the older model. It's always going to happen. You could keep waiting forever for a new Mac to come out. You can use common sense. You can check rumor sites and things like that. But people stress so much about that. And the truth is you get a Mac and a couple months later a new model comes out. It's probably only a little bit better than the one you've got now. And then there will be another one after that and another one after that. But if you wait you're still spending all those months using an older Mac and maybe not getting as much work done. Now I think the very next video I did was don't stress about batteries. I saw people stressing about their MacBook and iPhone and iPad batteries all the time. How do I get the most life out of it? Do I have to condition it? Do I have to do something special to make it last longer or be better or whatever? Let's talk about stressing over your Mac or iOS battery. And the truth is that you don't have to worry about any of that. People stressing over nothing. 
the batteries in Apple's products are really smart. The hardware is smart. The software is smart. It's handling it all for you. Use your Mac plugged in when it's convenient. Use it on the battery when it's convenient. People are wasting a lot of time and energy trying to use their Macs and their iOS devices in special ways maybe just to eke out another 1% of the battery. Now I've done a ton of videos on this since then because it keeps coming up. The most recent one is episode 1957. Now another thing I get asked about a lot and I first addressed it in episode 722 is do you need a cleaning program. Let's talk about whether or not you need Mac cleaning programs. I still get people asking me this. Should I download this Mac cleaning program that I've seen in advertisement for? And the answer is no. Years ago, decades ago, computers kind of need these cleaning programs to keep things you know, from getting too cluttered, from the machine slowing down. But the operating systems today take care of all of that for you. They're running maintenance in the background. A lot of these things these cleaning programs are doing are actually counterproductive and some of them are just outright adware or malware just spamming you with all sorts of things, taking your money from you. You don't need any cleaning software with your Mac. Just ignore those ads. Don't download any of that stuff. No maintenance software on your Mac. It's just as true today as it was back in that old episode. So over the last 2000 episodes a lot of things have stayed the same. Some things have changed. There's a lot more gray in my beard and Macs have gotten more awesome than ever. Looking forward to the next 2000 episodes. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.